Hello and welcome to the Ollie Podcast, the second show ever. Everybody seemed to enjoy the first show, and for that we'd just like to take this opportunity to say thank you so much for giving us your time. Today is none other than Tony O'Neill. Tony is the co-founder of Bubba and Kopi. I first came across Kopi whenever I had a dining experience in there two years ago. To put it simply, it was the best dining experience I ever had, and for the life of me, I couldn't put my finger on why or how it was so damn good. We talked to Tony about how he started out in his early stages of his journey. We talk about the interest and dynamic that Tony has with his wife and business partner, Andrea. I poke and prong at how they make that work. We hope you enjoy this show and we'll leave you with the company motto, which is small victories repeated daily. And thank you so much for listening, guys. We'll be rolling these out every Tuesday from here on out. So thank you and we'll talk soon. Tony, welcome to the show. How are you, sir? I'm good, Liz. How's things for yourself? I'm not too bad, not too bad. Um, firstly, thank you very much for coming on board. Um, if you want to give the people just a wee brief intro, who are you and what do you do? Uh, my name's Tony O'Neill. Um, I'm a chef by trade. Um, I've opened Kopi Restaurant eight years ago and basically we opened Kopi or Bubba two years ago. And I manage the day to day going. I'm not, not as much in the kitchen as I, as I used to be these days, but um, more just overseeing the restaurants. Intra- yes, man. That's, I've actually ate in here twice before in the last year, and both times it's been amazing. I actually Brilliant. haven't tried the bubble place, but no, we'll get straight into it, mate. Um, I kind of want to give the people a bit of a sense of your journey and what got you to this stage, and obviously it's going to be difficult. To, you've, how long have you been in the industry? Uh, I started when I was 16. 16, 16 so yes. your 48th birthday today, 48th happy birthday. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so you've been in the game for a long time, obviously. Um, you know, Where did you start? How did you get started? Um, I started... <laughs> When I, when I left school, you know, I, I was sort of not, not, the, not the best of students. <laughs> I was, uh, Belfast was a very different city back, back then in the, in the 80s. So I um, uh, was getting into a bit of trouble and uh, I left school, didn't do any exams. And um, I sort of fell into, into cooking, washing dishes, helping chefs in the kitchen. And, and that's where my love of food came and from there. Did that start in Belfast? Yeah, my first job was in the Strand on Strand Millers Road. It's now called uh, the Jeggy Nettle. Oh um, yes, yeah. yeah. So it was uh, it was a good restaurant back then in the day. So it was, um, but there, wa- there wasn't a lot of choice of, of good restaurants in Belfast at that time. And were you just kind of busboy, cleaning dishes, yeah, that type of thing? Yeah, I, I went in basically helping out in the kitchen, uh, put on dishes whenever the KPs didn't show in, and um, uh, and just really took it from there. And kind of when so when did you start? thinking right this could be a career this could be something that I would do full-time was it a natural progression or was it maybe a bit forced or kind of talk us through that no I think it was a bit forced at the start and I sort of fell it went in and out of different jobs and um, um, enjoyed myself when I was young and and uh, partied a bit but then uh, when myself and Andrea got married I was 22 when we got married we went out to Australia and it was really in Australia where I found my love of, um, of food the restaurant scene was very different back then and and uh, we'll actually get there because she's now your part business partner yes yeah, she's business partner yeah. as well yeah full yeah. business partner yeah. so we'll get to that after working with your wife i'm sure that's not easy but um <laughs> yeah let's even go to australia so i think um from having a uh, got to know you a bit over the last couple of years i've realized you know you got you, you started running your first restaurant in australia was it yes we did i i was i was actually born in australia so i was lucky enough to have an australian oh. passport so my, my parents uh, went out on the ten pound um, uh, boat back in the back in the day whenever That's they were crazy. trying to encourage uh, people from from UK and Ireland to to go out over to Australia and and help uh, build and and everything else. So I was actually ten when I first came to Belfast. That's crazy. So nineteen eighty two was the first time I came. <laughs> what to a time! Yeah, it was great. <laughs> and what what was the what type of restaurant did you go into first? What kind of restaurant? Well, was over it? there I went into a, a French restaurant. It was called La Grillade. It was in uh, Crow's Nest in Sydney. It was a brilliant restaurant, really really good reputation, and um, and that's where I really fell in love. I worked worked under a, um, a Swiss chef called uh, Nicholas Everhart. And he was fantastic. He really took me under my wing and um, and and helped me find my my real passion for food. That's it's interesting. Some like maybe a mental role, or you just need that one person who who has that passion already. And it's it's um, what's the word? It's infectious as such. It is infectious, you know. Especially, I was a wee bit rebellious as a child, and uh, you know. Um, 
and I think sometimes that re rebellion just needed channeled in a different way, and that was a, he, he had seen that in me, and that was a way to sort of channel that, <laughs> that rebellion did, into Did you into ever picture yourself being a chef? Yeah, I, I did, because I was sort of in and out of the job in, 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 yeah. in Ireland before I left, and then um, I'd always sort of pictured, but I never really took it serious. I think at the time there, was, there wasn't really a lot of options of good restaurants to go to in Belfast back then, so it was really going to somewhere like Australia, and it was so different, and the food scene was, was so different that that really sparked my love. And then when did you come home from Australia? What age? We, I was... Tw we... We lived in Sydney for a while. We ha ran a wee bistro in Sydney for um, for about a year. It was in the Cock and Bull in uh, Bondi Junction. <clears throat> and then we bought a camper van. Lived in the camper van for about a year and a half. That's so cool. Uh, just traveling around. We'd stop somewhere, get a job for a few months, and then off we go again. And then we settled in Cairns for about a year. Uh, lived in Cairns for a year. And then we went backpacking through Southeast Asia for six months. Let so me. we came we came back to this was myself and Andrea we were doing all this so we came back to uh, Belfast I think it was about 98 or so or the sort of late late 90s anyway so you're gone for the maybe they got to ten, eight, 8 to 10 years no or about, so? about um about 5 6 years yeah. 5 6 yeah, years yeah. that's crazy so you come back and it was your first port of call to get your own shop open no, I wor worked around for a while. Um, the waterfront had just opened and I was working in the waterfront for a while. And um, then I had a few other jobs uh, in between. And then I went to Beatrice Kennedy's. I was in Beatrice Kennedy's for about four years. Um, and then really I left Beatrice Kennedy's to go to work for Bill Woolsey. Um, he had just taken over a pub in Moira. This was before the merchant had opened or anything. So he had taken over a pub in Moira. And um, he was looking for somebody to go up and run that. And I thought it would be a good opportunity to go and work for someone like Bill, you know, to, to um, there'd be good opportunities for me. Yeah, big time. For anybody that doesn't know who Bill is, Bill's the hotelier, uh, publican, yeah. um, one of the biggest, uh, well, he owns a lot of bars and you probably yeah. drank <laughs> in one of his bars or uh, been in one of his restaurants or hotels over the over the years, um, to name a few, The Merchant, for example. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, what was it like going in and working for someone like Bill and kind of how did that then change the direction you were going within the game? Yeah, it was it was really good because um, I, I, I took a chance really because I went to work in a pub and then I had to sort of prove myself that I knew the merchant was opening and um, I knew there, there would be opportunities. So Bill, um, he, he ran Pretty Mary's for about six months or so, but then he asked me to go down to Tattoo and run Tattoo at the time on, on the Lisburn Road. Um, and again, he, I think he knew he was going to be selling Tattoo, so, and, and then it would be moving on to the merchant from mm -hmm. there. So it was, really, it was a really good opportunity to sort of um, get in with somebody like that, somebody who's very, very passionate and very driven. And I, I had always been a chef, so I was very much focused on the food and the, and the kitchen side of things. And where Bill sort of gave me that understanding of the whole business, the yeah. whole industry, you know, yeah. of looking at it as a whole, which is which a lot of chefs don't do, you know, because mm -hmm. so. they're just caught up in the kitchen and don't see the front end of it yeah. almost. Yeah. And what was like the biggest surprise is that well, what took you by surprise whenever you kind of moved into that frame of mind? Whenever thinking about well, maybe not necessarily your own kitchens at the time, but thinking about the restaurant, what was the biggest change? The biggest thing for me was that, to me in my head, it was always food and service were the two most important things of a restaurant. Um, they are very important, obviously, but the other thing is the ambience, the atmosphere, the the feeling of the place. You know, Bill would have always went said about the the heat, the light, the sound. You know, these things that people don't maybe don't notice about. straight yeah. away or think about but subconsciously they do you know and it's um and I, to this day i would put that on an equal par as if so the food the service Just and important. the ambience all of, all is equal is important that's interesting and um, it's actually one of the big questions that i wanted to ask you um yeah we might as well ask you now what in your opinion <coughs> does it take to make you know uh a really really good dining experience um, I think the actual question was my favourite dining experience happened in this building we are now in Kopi um, for everyone watching so yeah my favourite dining experience I ever had was in this uh, restaurant this is before I even knew you as well so this is not a, <laughs> a sales pitch um, but yeah we sat for three and a half hours and I had never experienced or done that before yeah. um, we came in food was done <coughs> within an hour and a half and maybe two hours and 
we had got four courses, which I would never do either. And then we sat and had drinks and coffees and whatnot after. And um, everything about the evening just felt perfect. Brilliant. And I can't contextualize why or how. <laughs> and to this day, it's still my favorite, favorite dining experience. Brilliant. But excellent, excellent. what, Glad in your it. opinion, um, you know, makes that for someone? I think it's... It to, to the best dining experience you're ever going to have can be very personal. You know, it's not always going to be about the best food you've ever eaten or the best service you've been getting. It can be the person you're with mm-hmm. or the, the atmosphere of how that night's going. You know, it, 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 the best dining experience can be very personal to lots of people. What we try to do in here is, is take the stuffiness out of it, make it fun, make it relaxed so yeah. people can feel relaxed. You know, um, we like the idea that people will finish their dinner you know, even if their table's rebooked, they can move up to the bar and yeah, and they time. like the idea of sitting on for a while. You know, and they're not they're not sort of forced out. You know, we we never book these high rise areas. Um, so again, it gives us that flow of the restaurant, so it can turn around. And on Saturday night, you see people standing just here in the on. window, and they'll just smell, and it, it's almost like a bar. It feels yeah. like a bar at the night, but it is. It's trying to capture that. I believe I like relaxed dining experiences. I like to take all the stuffiness out of it, and I just like people to really kick back and enjoy themselves that's interesting and it's one thing to say it but like what are other things that you do to kind of deliver this like uh, i know that evening i think i know i'd heard you say before about like the ambience and even uh-huh. the temperature in a room and the the, the level of the music you yeah. know we things like that that you don't even think about our music sort of gradually goes up yeah. as the day goes and and it's the, the, the our managers are great at sort of gauging how many people are in the bu- in the building at the time you know and there's no point just having a structure that the, yeah. the volume goes up and there's only 20 people sitting mm-hmm. in the room you know so it's having that it's gauging the atmosphere with four different four or five different playlists you know so and we constantly refresh them but they're for different times of the day and different levels and and the managers are brilliant at sort of gauging that and seeing what people are in the restaurant at that time and will the volume go up a little or down a down little. Level. The heat's very important. I mean, this restaurant, there's a lot of concrete, there's a lot of wood, there's a lot of tiles, so it does feel quite industrial. So if it's cold in here, it starts to look industrial, yeah. too industrial, yeah. but if it's warm, you know, it feels it's warm welcoming. and it feels co- yeah. welcoming and cozy. And uh, the lights are another one, you know, again, the lights will gradually go down as, a, as the night goes out on as well. That's an interesting take on it, like it's, from just coming in and having experienced it, it really does make the difference, and it's something that you don't even notice, and I suppose that's what you want ultimately. It's exactly what you want, you know, you want that, that you shouldn't, a customer shouldn't go, oh, the lights just went up or down, <laughs> or oh, the music went up, then it's, it's far too intrusive yeah. then, you know, it, it needs to be a very gradual thing. So it's, it's really, a, like, I'm genuinely um, interested in to hear that and to he- see what goes into making that kind of dining experience. One thing that I wanted to ask also was, so obviously we've heard about how you're making things your own. When was that definitive moment where you said, right, Andy, let's go, and refer to Andy as his wife. So if you hear me say that, that's who I'm referring to. Um, you know, when was the moment that you said to your wife, right, let's go and open up our own place? Um, it was really, I've been working for Bill for about 10 years, I think, and, um, and the urge had always been there with me to do it. And, and I went and had a good chat with Bill, and he, he talked, talked me through the sort of the pitfalls and the, and the downfalls. And did he try to talk you out of it, having been with you? Or he did. did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But in the same way, he, he encouraged me as well. He was because supporting he, your dream. Yeah, 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 yeah. Big time. Bit of both. So. <laughs> telling me, telling me the, 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 the hard truths. And yeah. the, and the but you need that. You, you do. That. Um, and what was the first restaurant you opened up in Belfast? Uh, Il Parada in Ballyhackamore. Oh, no. so. I actually, I've eaten there before. It's closed down. Is it closed down? No, no, it's still open. It's yeah, still open yeah, now? Yeah. Um, like it's just been a while since I've been over yeah. that neck <laughs> of the woods. Um, so you went El Prada and then Kopi? Yes, El Prada and then Kopi. Um, and we then had, there was another business partner involved at the time, and um, we had hope, opened up um, a few other different restaurants, but myself and Andrea took Kopi about three oh. years ago now, and uh, as so so it was just my, the two of us involved and then we opened Bubba a year later so so two things off that one and you don't need to answer these at the same time one what is it like doing business with your wife and two what is it like opening restaurants in Belfast because Belfast is a unique city we'll go with question two we'll talk about Andy after <laughs> um you know Belfast is quite a unique city uh-huh. um in comparison to the rest of the UK what's it like opening a restaurant in in Belfast 
I love open restaurants in Belfast. Uh, whenever I first left Belfast um, in the early 90s, I, I, th I think I was gone for good. I was never coming back to Belfast. I think things were, you know, it was pro before the Good Friday Agreement, before, um, before there was a lot of, it was probably a bad time in the yeah. early 90s at Belfast. They were going through a lot of, a lot of troubles and, and stuff happening. So I was away, that was me done. I, I had sort of had my fill of it all. Mm -hmm. and, but Andrea, Andrea sort of got homesick and wanted to come back. And I actually love Belfast now, and, and it excites me. I, I think we're we're a very we're a young city still. We're Big growing. There, we're, there's so much more to, to see. You know, tourism's only just really at its, at its start. Um, so the more and tourists love this. You know, we, we do have a hospitality that that people really really get, and even more so than Dublin or you know when you come to Belfast because it, it's. It's not really a city. It's a big town, really. You yeah, know, so yeah. y you're not you're not too far away from anything, and it's just it's just a, a, a great uh, place to visit. The the biggest pitfall we do have is it's a weekend city, you know, so it makes it difficult for us to trade. That sort of Mondays yeah. Mondays to Thursdays are hard because, but everybody wants to come out at the weekends and big time. So that that would be the the difficult. But I I love Belfast, you know, and I've still got still I still got more to more to go in Belfast as well. There's still more I, I see an opportunity for big time and it's kind of like it is it's a city under construction if you were to come up like the amount of cranes and stuff and the amount of buildings that are going up and there there seems especially in the last 10 years um there seems to be a real big vibe going on right now the likes of um bubba opening up and there's a whole um stack of eateries that have opened up that are kind of for a bit more of a tailored want and need within the food like it was one of the things that i wanted to bring you to was what have been the main changes in the this industry in the last kind of 10 15 years in your opinion or from what have you seen i think the biggest changes are a lot of chefs have went away and come back with their new ideas and their and their sort of um the skills that they've learned from being abroad and and the, I, I just think the restaurant scene's phenomenal over here. It I really is. do. You know, I, I think it's hard pushed to get a bad meal in Belfast. There's so many good restaurants, and there's great camaraderie between the guys in all the restaurants. And the, and I, I just think there's still a still a, a, a way to go. But I just think we we compete and we we punch well above our weight as with any city and in the UK and, and is there any kind of because it is such a small kind of ecosystem of businesses is there any like negative competition or is it everybody's kind of in it for the for the no, greater I think good it's, I think it's quite positive you know uh, obviously there's competition yeah. but there's not negative competition you know I think everybody sees the greater the greater good that Belfast is it's, it's, it's at the start of a journey for me personally I think it's at the start of a journey you know and it, it's got a, not, a long way to go and it's you know the cathedral quarter you only have to look at the cathedral quarter 10 oh, years ago big time it was a very very different place you know so what it is now like yeah you had um nick's warehouse was the, the only one here for a long time um then bill opened the merchant hotel and the, the, it sort of changed the landscape around here and now look at the pubs uh, <laughs> Yeah, any anyone I talk to, anybody that's even came to Belfast, even if it was for something as, as you know trivial as a stag do, or even if it was a weekend away with their partners or whatever, like everybody loves it, yeah, and it's the yeah. people as well. You, like if you meet anybody from Northern Ireland, you, like you're they're gonna leave a lasting impression on yeah. you. Yeah, and we actually just got um, the purple flag status as well for the city, which means it's um, it's recognised as a worldwide safe city to come to, which is which is brilliant. <laughs> Who would have thought that? <laughs> I know <laughs> the irony of it all. But no, um, a couple of minutes ago, you know, I'd said about you know, what is it like doing business with your your better half, let's uh -huh. say. Um, you know, so you and, and Andrea have been well, together a long time, but uh, working together uh -huh. for a long time as well. What's that like, kind of, um, you know, having your wife and your business partner being the same person? I love it. It works for us. I know it doesn't work for everybody, but it, it really does work for us. I mean, we're married 26 years this year, so it's... Um, Congrats. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> so it, it just works for us. You know, we, we, um, we've got two different, very different set of skill sets, and um, we bounce off each other. You know, we never argue about anything. We have... Um, we, we discuss things, we talk about them, and then we come to come to agreements on them. So yeah, it, it works perfect for us. It's pretty healthy to be like that. Um, and what are kind of what strengths would she be able to bring to the table, and uh, what are your strengths, and where does um, that amalgamate? 
Well, my strengths are obviously, um, obviously from the food side of things, you know, from uh, sort of knowing, knowing the direction I, I like to go and understand in the kitchen, which is, yeah. a, which is a very strong point for anybody who owns a restaurant because yeah. the kitchen can sort of make or break you sometimes in a lot of places. Um, Andrea very much brings, a, she's got great people skills. She's great, great with the front of house and, and the kitchen talking. Great with the promotion, the marketing, the you, you know the the other side of things. Answering emails that I'm not very good at. You know? um, do you reckon as a team it's much easier to kind of stay motivated and stay driven um, when you're doing that together? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And like having that shared dream as well, I would say really helps both of you stay like you know it does it keeps you positive because we do have the same um passions and the same um ideas of where we want to take the company and where we want to go with it so that's a that's interesting so for everybody out there that's saying they can't stand their wife this guy who works and lives with his wife 24 <laughs> 7 so one thing i wanted to ask you so you've been in in the the game for a long time uh -huh. a very long time what what what, what, I want to make this a thing. How do you keep it fresh? Like, how do you keep it exciting for yourself? You know, travel is a big thing for me. Travel? Yeah, we travel a lot. Uh, the, on Saturday, we're going to uh, Marrakesh for five days. Um, oh, it's a lovely place. Just, yeah. So it's just, uh, I'll, I'll bring back, you know, I'll make contact with um, the guys who, who sell the spices. You know, we'll buy tagines for Baba because Baba has that real uh, Middle Eastern, Mediterranean, um, North African sort of influence okay. to the food. So. You know, we'll go in there and I'll make contact if somebody where I can buy spices from direct. I've already got somebody in Istanbul that we went to last year, but it just it gives us that that connection, you know, and um, that's awesome. what the real food is about. Uh, we'll, we're going to Nashville in March, um, and last year we, we we do have a new idea for a project that we really wanted to go to. My passion, I really love Southeast Asian food, and that's sort of our next step of what of what we want to want to, to roll out a restaurant and we were, we were traveled around Southeast Asia for three and a half weeks last last year just getting the inspiration for it That's, I think I seen the photos it looked it looked epic yeah. <laughs> um, and is that is that generally where you gather your inspiration from yeah hundred percent you know even every six weeks we'll jump on a flight to London you know because London's got everything it's yeah. vibrant it's you know and just keeps you fresh you know you go around a couple of restaurants you know um, Myself and Andrew are big into our fitness. We do look after ourselves well, but you know, so we'll we'll go for a weekend. We'll go to London for three days and just eat solidly for. <laughs> I suppose it's a cool way, like, because you're essentially just epitomising what it is that you're doing. Like, you're it's it's a part of your life, you know, to go and travel and to eat and to to kind of eat your way around places. Yeah, it's yeah. something that um, I'm yet to to really latch on to. I'm like a, a basic guy if I see a a bagel joint that's me yeah. i'm all over it but um no the the big question we ask everyone tony um is what is what is your version of success and how do you define it and we've had so many varied answers and i'd be really interested to hear what your response is so in as little words as possible try to find success to you oh, he's i would say uh, for um getting there <laughs> my Success for me is, is balance in life, and it's a work-life balance that um, maybe especially when I was a chef, I would have probably been working 70 hours a week and, um, and, and pushing and pushing and pushing because I, I did have a goal and I wanted to achieve that. 70 plus hours every week, you know, That's so crazy. That, did have a, that would have had a pressure on myself and Andrea in the early days. Um, my success then was probably to own a restaurant. My success now is, is about balance. You know, I've, I've got a 20-year-old daughter and an 18-year-old son. I've got a great work-life balance. I can travel. Um, I've got a great team in here who'll, who'll, who'll deliver the restaurant for us and, and who have been with us a long time. And really, that's, that's how I measure success. You know, I've got a good balance between my work I'm still very, very passionate about what I do in the restaurants and, and um, I've got a great family life balance. Yeah. That's a really interesting take. Um, we've had someone on that was, was somewhat similar and it was all about balance and that, that's something that I'm kind of in the period of my life and I have no understanding of what that when is. When you're young, you don't, I think, because I was the same age. It was, to me, it was work, 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 work. and get. Y y yes, I always had aspirations and I always wanted to do my own restaurant. And probably when I was younger, I thought it was all about, yeah, I'm going to open a restaurant, I'm going to make a fortune, I'm going to be rich. And that sort of changes as, as, um, as you get older, you know, where your passion is driven by something very, very different, whether it's your passion in, in your work 
for me in my work in the restaurant in the food in the in the service and in my home life you know that's that's the passions that the, the balance of, that i like that's awesome and like obviously you've it's kind of been a big developmental thing as well whenever you started out you, you like you know a goal was to get the restaurant open mm -hmm. and then it's it so it's interesting to see how that's changed over the over the years but you said one thing um that really struck with me was about getting the team in here uh -huh. and i would say that having that team has been what has been one of the bigger things to deliver getting balance yeah um but one thing that i know i can only relate to to us like we don't have that at all anymore because we're a small business so everybody's doing everything but um, at what point did you realise, right, I do need a team to scale this and I do need a team if I am to live the life that I want? Yeah, I, I sort of realised it quite early on, you know, from opening the Operata. Uh, we, we were still, I was still doing a little bit of work for Bill at the, at the time. Yeah. So he had asked me to stay on for a while. So whenever I was working in the Operata and I, I had to put a team in place, and it just got me thinking, you know, that I, I never wanted to build restaurants about me or around my name or about, I wanted to build restaurants that were standalone. Uh, standalone. Yeah. Uh, Kobe was Kobe, you know, it didn't, it wasn't because I was standing in the kitchen seven nights a week or, I, you mm -hmm. know, Andrea was out on the floor. It was, yeah. uh, they were just really about a restaurant to come to and a good restaurant in its own right. I think early on, that's, that's when I sort of discovered, you know, if you've got the right team in place to who will deliver that for you that's and in this game it which is so service driven yes your product needs to be epic as well but it's so service driven so like how do you communicate that to a team like how do you um communicate your dream and your vision for well, the restaurant to we're here else? every day so we're talking every day and we're, we're very honest we're very we're very um you know we won't nobody nobody ever shouts in here the days of screaming chefs and all that they're they're all gone but we're very honest with each other you mm -hmm. know our staff can come and say to us, listen, I, I'm, I didn't like this or I didn't like that, or we, we'll say the same, vice versa. So we, we learn off each other as we grow. We have um, weekly meetings every every week where we sit down for an hour, an hour and a half and with all the managers and just go through everything, you know, so not the trivial things, but the things that make the difference. Of yeah. the, of the, and then we, we're all on the same page from that. You know, I think that one, an hour, hour and a half meeting every week is just a good way to get everybody on the same the same page you know and did you struggle with that initially like i know for me it's one it's i find it difficult to communicate a dream that mm. i have or a vision that i have like did you struggle with that as well or do you still struggle with yeah, it yeah it took ages to, to really get it you know the, the, the thing is you just it's all about communication and it's about open honest communication you know and um and because he you know if i if i walk in here at night <clears throat> and the lights are too bright i'm not going to go away and mumble about it or i'm going to say to the manager I'm, Turn them, them keep right, turn them down. You know, it's as simple as that. I'm not going to get annoyed about it. I'm not going to get it, but it's just. But it is. Uh, it's difficult to create an environment where open honesty is a, a, a common thing. Uh huh. And yeah. it's one thing that um, is really prevalent now. Like, especially we're we're in the 2020. Well, we're in the 2020s now, and like everybody's a bit sensitive to that. I yeah. find. Um, even people that isn't aren't in our business, like they just. Well, honesty can be delivered in a in a in a good way too it doesn't have to be, <laughs> it doesn't have to be you know yeah um brutal like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and in, uh, is that a skill that you've really really had to learn yeah, yeah. um yeah. like what, what what are your kind of your worst traits in business like what is the things that you would struggle with um what would i struggle with the most um probably the, the thing that I'm lucky in a way that the things I, my weaknesses are the things Andrew is good at. Uh, that is and the vice versa. So that is, that's where we balance off each other. You know, she's great at getting the word out there of the restaurants, you know, um, speaking to, to people out there, communicating through email. I'm, I'm shopping at all that, you know, I'm, I'm great at doing it. Yeah. In -house yeah. And, yeah. But, so she, she's great at, at, at all that side. And so all my weaknesses, she picks them up and vice versa. You played a blinder there, Tony. <laughs> um, one big question, um, what is next for Tony O'Neill in general? What is next for you with restaurants, personal life, whatever? Um, well, we're sort of just, we, we do have more restaurants w that we want to open. Um, we're cu currently looking for sites at the minute. So uh, when those sites come, we'll be straight in there. You know, we're just looking for the right things and the, and the right opportunity. Um, I suppose I'm at an age now, my daughter's in her second year of uni. Um, my son's uh, in doing his final year of A levels. So I'm at, I'm at that point now where the sort of trying to steer them in the right direction and find out where they want to go mm -hmm. to. And, um, 
But for myself in business, it's definitely myself and Andrea. We, we have a couple more restaurants that we still want to open in Belfast. And are you going to kind of continue on the themes? And I kind of got it wrong earlier. Like, Bubba isn't an Italian restaurant. It's Kopi is the... Kopi is the Italian, yeah. yeah. So that's more... That takes in the sort of Eastern Mediterranean, sort of from Turkey to Greece, round to the... Through the Middle East and North Africa. And so kind of where are you planning on taking the cuisine next? I know you don't want to South probably East give Asia. away... Southeast Asia. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And what kind of... Well, you know, I'm not really a big foodie so what would that look like on You've a menu? Got Thai, Vietnamese, uh, Malaysian, all those sorts of areas around there so. Awesome and coming into the heart of Belfast or on the outskirts? Yeah yeah or? in the heart of Belfast hopefully you know and we'll, we'll do what we, we do you know it's um we'd never cast ourselves as being an authentic Italian here or uh, you know yeah. authentic Turkish we, we take all those flavours and and are you know we, we've, we've travelled a lot through Italy and I just take the Italy the Italians are very sort of you know, regionalized. So you know what they do in the north and the south is very, very different. Syria, I wouldn't really, have known that. Yeah, there, there's it's broken up into a lot of regions where we look at the whole Italy as a whole and sort of take take it sort of opens up the borders a bit more. You know, so. And on the personal side of your life, mm -hmm. you know, I know you're a keen cyclist. I know you're 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 both into your your health uh -huh. um, and and training and stuff. So what's kind of big for you in your personal life in the next upcoming years? You know, you'd said about your kids and stuff. So yeah, I, I'm sort of I'm 48 today. And I've always said I would try and do uh, um, Ironman before I'm oh. 50. So that's maybe... <laughs> you, and Paddy, you and Paddy can get together. Paddy is trying to do... Well, he's got a... The only thing I don't like is ru the running. I, I have run six marathons, but I hate running. Uh, I'm the opposite. <laughs> yeah, I know. He's, he must be the only person... Um, I love the swimming and the cycling. I could do that all day. So it's, it's just, it's a, just the swimming that just petrifies me, man. Right. It's, it's just getting into to water. And it's, not the, it's the Aussie in me, you know. I was sort of <laughs> brought, brought, True. brought up in the water. <laughs> so um, you want to get a triathlon or a, an Ironman? When it, yeah. What what age well, do you reckon? Do, I might do. Well, before I'm fifty, I've always sort of said the goal. I might do a half one next year and then, or this year maybe, and then. Paddy's got a wee wee uh, half yeah, one yeah. in in Sweden. Right. 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 Oh yeah, yeah. Well, my, my, my time. <laughs> Mate, you, give us give us a shout if you need the suits and stuff. I will do. I will do definitely. We'll get a we'll get a wee uh, collaboration going. Um, <laughs> but no. Uh, listen, mate. We've we've covered a lot today. Um, I would say that's all for today, Paddy. Um, we'll say our thank yous. Firstly, thank Please. you, Tony, thank you, Luke. for coming yes, on board. Thank you. Um. Anybody that is in the Belfast area, I highly recommend. This is not a sales pitch. It is a genuine <laughs> call. If you like a good dining experience and you want to come, um, Sinan Square for Kopi and Bubba. Um, Kopi's probably my favorite, but that's a biased opinion. Um, <laughs> thank you to everybody for listening today. Um, do you want to plug your best? Do you know your Instagram plugs and stuff like that? Uh, yes, it's Kopi Belfast and Bubba Belfast would nice. be the handle. At, um, uh, uh, on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, yeah. And maybe so. anything coming up that people could maybe hop on board, any kind of, not promos, but like um, seasonal things that are We've coming up? We've got a lovely, at the end of, um, if you go on to Bubba's uh, Instagram or Facebook, in the next week or so we'll be releasing, we did a Moroccan night last week, but next at the end of March we'll be doing a Greek night. Oh, nice. So that'll, that'll be an interesting one. They're, they're like, we do one once a month, the regional, and they're, they're, they sell really, really well. Before so. we finish, actually, Tony, I should have asked this. What's your favorite meal? What's your favorite dish? My favorite meal or my favorite? If you had to eat one dish for the rest of your life. Oh, jeez, that's like asking you. <laughs> What's favorite your favorite band? Or your favorite <laughs> child? <laughs> um, I don't know. It'll probably be something Thai, to be honest. Really? Yeah, yeah. Probably a really good, um, a really good curry or, or something, something like a. There's a sort of the, the Thais do a lovely. It's done with mince. It's like a sort of a, a, a ground sort of minced meat uh, jungle style curry, which is probably one of my all-time favorites. But Unreal. but it's hard that I couldn't restrict myself. I know, myself. I know it would be so a good. different answer, yeah, a different day yeah. of the week. <laughs> it would be. But um, but no, listen. Thank you everybody uh, for listening. Um, we will leave you with the Ollie mantra, the Ollie motto, which is small victories repeated daily. Um, and we will see you guys soon. Thank you.